Hi, everybody. Before we get to another great interview, we could really use your help. IMDB, which is the entertainment database, recently named the Two Opinionated Podcast one of its top 100 podcasts. This is a monumental feat for this program. You know, we're a father and son team out of a small town in West Virginia, have been doing this for about five years. There's 15 million podcasts out there. About 40,000 of those get to the point that they're listed on IMDb. Out of those 40,000 out of the 15 million, we are ranked number 82. Something that we're just immensely proud of. We're so thankful for our listeners, our watchers, our fans. Thank you so, so much. If you would like to help us out and we're asking for it, please. Um, it's easy. It's real, it, it's really easy. It's free. If you go to IMDB, that's IMDB.com, look up two opinionated podcasts and just take a look at the page. That's all you have to do. I mean, you're welcome to look at the cast, look at the episodes so you can kind of see who's been on the program. Do whatever you want. But even just bringing up the page, imdb.com, Two Opinionated Podcast, bring up the page, look at it. That helps us so much. So please, if you can do anything, we would really appreciate that. Um, our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. Love to have your subscription there. It's also free. And you can also check out our website, MeisterCon.com, where you'll find almost 700 episodes, audio and video, available on there. There's also a terrific blog from Brett, and it'll let you know anything that we have going on in studio, if we're covering a convention, if we're going on location, anything that we have going on will be on the website, MeisterCon.com. Thank you guys so, so much. We appreciate you so much. I, I can't express enough how appreciative we are of all of you. We never, never expected to, to do as well as, as we have. And that's all because of you. Thank you so much. Enjoy that interview. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. Welcome to another edition of Two Opinionated. I'm so excited today. I've got actor Alexander Manitas with me. So welcome, Alexander. Thank you for having me. Did I get it close on the last name? Is it Manitas? It's very close. So it's a Greek surname, um, but it is Maniatis. Oh, Maniatis. That's, oh, that sounds, that's much prettier. <laughs> well, you got the, uh, the West Virginia accent version. <laughs> now I don't feel too bad. I was, I was fairly close for a stab at it. Very, very close. And I think from now on, that's the way that my surname should <laughs> No, be. no, no. Yeah. Yours is better. I, <laughs> I knew it was Greek, um, and I always think Greek-sounding names are just very pretty to listen to when it's said correctly, not when it's said in my accent. <laughs> <laughs> well, Alexander, welcome to the show. I'm, I'm thrilled to death to uh, to talk with you. I, I, I told uh, my wife and I watched One Piece together, and which is rare for her, but she loved it too. Um you are absolutely like our favorite villain on the show. Oh, thank you so much. It means a lot to me. You're so creepy. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, there was a lot of work that went into, into finding uh, Captain Kiro. Um, and I was so stressed when, eventually when we found out, you know, that it is One Piece and these are the characters that we are going to portray. Um, there was a lot of pressure because obviously yeah. there's a huge fandom and we didn't want to disappoint. So the work that went into it was a lot of tears, a lot of sweat. <laughs> well, there's such a, a, a fall. I mean, there's like 1100 episodes of the anime and yeah. the track record for turning anime or manga into live action, not great. So, so I, you know, I, I could I can feel the pressure and the fan base is probably like, OK, this is probably not going to work. But it did. <laughs> it was done so well. <laughs> I think it's, it's because the, the showrunners, the amazing Matt and, and Steven, they're such huge fans 
of the show and therefore there's a lot of respect for the source material and again I think working with with the creator Oda just helped so much to stay true to the source material yeah, and and you know, I've uh, we had uh, Aiden and Stephen have both been on the uh, program, and I, I talked to them about part of the reason we liked it so well is because they it it wasn't just an adaption. They actually, you know, it was like watching an anime that wasn't an anime because they did like the uh, uh, yelling out their moves before they you know they did them, and and the uh, you know some of the scenes. It was like you were watching you know, the anime, you know, because yeah. of the, it, it showed the powers, which was kind of surprising. Like, like if you tried to do this adaption, even 10 years ago, I don't think the special effects would have been able to do it. No, there was an amazing team uh, working on this and it was such a huge honor to be a part of this um, spectacular show that is One Piece. Yeah. Um, a lot of people who believed in it and I think therefore also, that's why it did so well. There was a lot of people who really believed in in the show and you could see that going to set. It was one of the most amazing experiences as an actor to be on set. It was just such a joyous um, experience every day. Yeah, that's pretty great and probably yeah. not as common as you would like as an actor. <laughs> 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 well had did were you aware of the anime i know they kind of hid what you were trying out for and and until the last possible moment but did you know of you know have you seen anything of it or did you have to go and kind of check it out after you found out so i knew of one piece um but i didn't watch it beforehand yeah um until I got the thumbs up for my character and said, okay, cool, this is the character's name. This is the actual show. Um, because when we started the first round of the auditions, it was called Project Panda. Right. Uh, I love that. <laughs> yeah. It was phenomenal. And they used different names for the characters. Um, there was a, a script specifically written for the auditions. Ooh, um, yeah which was phenomenal. And um, once I found out that, you know, this is one piece, I think it was before my last callback. I had three, three rounds. Um, right before the last round, um, I was told, cool, this is one piece and this is your character. And I remember just like trying to find the anime and just trying to capture the essence. Yeah, well, and like, I'm trying to watch the anime now. I'm probably not going to finish before I die. There's so much. <laughs> <laughs> and then I heard, well, it was this morning that uh, it was released that they are doing a new anime version of One Piece. Oh, really? I hadn't yeah. seen that. So are they, is it just a remake of the original? Like, are they just updating it or is it a spinoff? I think so. It's, it's Netflix doing it as well. Ah. Yeah, well, it'll probably be, uh, I'm guessing, an English version, maybe? Probably, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Although it doesn't take away, you know, even with uh, uh, dubbing or subtitles, either one. It's it's so well done. Doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. the, I think that's the one or the best thing about the streaming services all kind of uh, developing over the years is, you know, here... In the states, where we've been exposed to content worldwide that we never were exposed to before, really good stuff out there that we were missing. <laughs> it's 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 the same here in South Africa. Um, the international shows that we are exposed to now, you know, from anime to more serious films, is just absolutely phenomenal and yeah. very inspiring. Well, you've obviously got a really uh, robust uh, film industry there. Um, yeah. You know, it's been impressive because so much of the cast was from South Africa. And, you know, we hadn't seen most of you, uh, at least not very often. Yeah, And and it's, it's I, I, surprising is not the right word, but it's, it's a little surprising that there's so <laughs> many good actors down there. <laughs> You know, I don't want to step on anybody's toes. Um, 
I think what I, as a South African actor, that what I'm really grateful for is the, um, first of all, the location, because yeah. there's a lot of international um, filmmakers who sort of rush to Cape Town because, you know, first of all, we've got Cape Town Film Studios here and it's absolutely amazing. It's phenomenal. We've got those water tanks there. Um, and then just the location in itself, there's so many options. Um, so just location wise, it opens up, you know, all these possibilities for work, which is phenomenal. Yeah, it's um, it's pretty great. I mean, you you've uh, I know you've uh, done uh, uh, some some work with some of the programs that we have over here. I know and I, I remember seeing you. You were kind of the jerk cop on Warrior. I remember that. That was <laughs> Warrior was was. Uh, I started watching it when I was running on a treadmill because it it was. Oh. Uh, it, it had enough fight scenes and stuff that kind of motivated me to run a little bit, if that, that makes sense. So I remember you on that, but I saw you you had a little appearance on Young Pope, too. So you've done some work from over here. Yeah, and there was also um, Ice Season 2, um, which was also an American uh, show. Yeah. Uh, yeah, it was also a phenomenal experience. Yeah, it's like... Like I, I was, t I mentioned there at the beginning, your character on One Piece so creepy. You know, it's like as soon as you showed up, I was telling my wife, I was like, "Oh, he's no good. That's that's somebody <laughs> you got to watch out for." You could you could tell, but you didn't know what was going to happen. Like we hadn't figured out that he's a pirate. You know, we haven't figured that out yet. You know, did you enjoy kind of playing the villain, and you got to have the kind of the claws as your weapon? I must say it was, um, first of all, when, you know, playing any character, um, you learn so much about yourself through these characters as a person. And um, through Kiro, it allowed me to tap into parts of myself, which was probably either slightly suppressed, like anger or you know, because I'm not a, a very rageful person or a very right. angry person. <laughs> the opposite but i guess with kira it was like hey you should have been angry at that stage in your life and you should have been angry at that stage and if you don't deal with this you could end up you know like this man who <laughs> well if you start <laughs> slicking your hair back we might start getting concerned <laughs> <laughs> pushing up the glasses i did like the uh with the palm i, I thought that was a good touch I worked with a therapist uh, to develop the character. Oh, okay. uh, so I went to therapy as Captain Kuro, um, which was an absolutely crazy but amazing experience. But it was also just to try and get to, because there's a theory that most of our trauma comes from childhood trauma, and we right. are the way that we are because of some form of hurt when we were kids. And it was trying to find or to build that backstory for Kiro. Why is he so angry? Why, <laughs> you know, all of this. And it was coming up with that backstory, which really helped a lot. And to tap into the way that he moves because he has had a very specific walk. Um, he did, yeah. Yeah, which added to kind of the, you know, that uh, uh, fear factor, I think, as an audience, because you're like, oh, what's he up to? You know, he always <laughs> kind of looked like he was kind of kind of sneaking around a little bit. <laughs> yeah, like a mischievous act. <laughs> well, so did the therapist, you know, were they working with you as Alexander to develop the character or were they actually treating you like you were in character? So uh, when I went in to, the, to a session, it would normally start off as myself, um, just to sort of like do a catch up. And then there would be a countdown to go, okay, cool. She would explain, for example, there were these different scenarios that I would be Clahador and Kira at the same time. And I, I would have conversations with myself as Clahador, as Kira. Um, I'm glad. Yeah, it was absolutely amazing because you sort of like, because you studied the material, um, the character's already there and the answers will automatically be there. 
Um, and it's to try and find that balance between these two. And there was a third personality, the actual man, which could be traced back to the boy and the childhood trauma, et cetera. Um, and to find the links between all three of them. That's so deep. I mean, that's so involved to to portray a, a character. I've never heard of that being done. I, I love that. What a great way to get into character. It was an absolute amazing experience. It was also quite scary afterwards because I, I had to lose a little bit of weight for Kiro. Um, and then obviously, because normally I, I have a beard. Yeah. And for Kiro, the beard had to go. The hair was colored pitch black. And I remember um, when we did our last scene, the next day, um, sort of like you stepped out of character and now I'm Alexander again, back at home. And all my clothes are too big. My hair is still black. Um, and all I can see is this character and everything that was sort of like revealed to me about myself through this character. And now you have to enter, integrate it into your everyday life. And I went into a little bit of a very dark place because of this character, <laughs> but all for the better um, to help me deal with certain things, which was absolutely amazing. Yeah, that's that's. That's incredible. And we we love the, um, you kind of had, like you had an overarching story throughout the series, but each episode was a little bit self-contained too, in that most of the episodes you had a villain for that episode. So, so your episode, you were the bad guy. And I'm embracing it. I really loved the layers to, to Kira and, some other reason now the universe is just sending me all these baddies to play and I'm just well, i was going to ask you is now now that you've done that are you getting more offers to play you know the bad guy it was so weird i remember in 2020 it was right after the hard lockdown yeah uh, i did a film called love lies and hybrids um and it was a romantic comedy um and after that film, I was, you know, I just sat one day and I was like, listen, I would like to play a baddie. I've always played sort of like the boy next door or, you know, some form of a of a good guy. Um, I was like, I need something that's, you know. Sometimes those are fun to play. So fun. <laughs> you know, lay it. Yeah. Well, that's the thing is a lot of times the villain is he's he's the deepest character. You know, you really get into, you know, what's driving his kind of, you yeah. know, his psychosis or his, you know, being angry at everything. And and now that I know you actually went to therapy to get there, that's pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think that's normal on most sets. Coming back to the to the therapy after the cast. <laughs> <laughs> Well, did you have to did you have to practice with the uh, you know the knives? I did, and I actually have the. Um, oh, the you practice. kept them. So these are the practice gloves. Um, they were really sweet enough for me to to keep these as a souvenir. Um, I mean, are you going to are you dressing as him for Halloween? Like you know now till you know forever. I mean, you've got the you've got the costume basically. You slick your wearing, hair back, you're there. I'm wearing this every day. Like I have my sushi with it. I clean with it. <laughs> That's pretty great. And it's totally what I would do. I'd just be doing like normal household chores wearing them. Yeah, uh, just you know, vacuuming and dusting and <laughs> it kind of make you want to uh order food delivery. And answered the door that way. <laughs> <laughs> I'll try next time. I'll make a little video and then I'll send it to you. Oh, yeah. See, I, don't you think, what if you were in character and just out in everyday life? So you're going to the coffee shop, you're, you're driving through, getting fast food, you're at the library, whatever it is, but in character. That'd be a, that'd be a good YouTube channel. That would be a lovely YouTube channel. Thank you for the idea. I'm making a note. I'll make sure you'll get your commission. You know, it's a great idea until, you know, you're arrested for 
<laughs> scaring somebody with the uh, fake claws, then then it might not be a great idea. <laughs> so, Alexander, let's let's back up a little bit. Tell me a little bit about what got you into acting, because acting obviously not an easy profession. You know, what kind of made you want to get into entertainment? Um, I think without making it a you know, a, a sob story, but as a child, I was also very, very quiet yeah. within my dynamics. Um, and in primary school, um, I got introduced to, uh, we had a group that used to sing and dance, and I was introduced to that by my best friend at the time, and we're still best friends. It's We've been friends now for 32 years. Oh, I love uh, that. See, my best friend, we met uh, first day of kindergarten. So we were five. So it's been almost 50 years for us. Oh, wow. That's amazing. Yeah. I love it. The uh, uh, childhood friends are the best. Are the best. Yeah. Because you also know each other. Right. The best. Yeah. That's right. Because you've seen all the good and the bad and you're still friends. <laughs> uh, my, my best friend, um, Ruan. Uh, he's an absolutely amazing guy, and he got me into into the music. I've always had a love for for TV, and that's yeah. you know I want to sort of like thank my grandmother for that because she had a love for music and and TV. I grew up with them for I lived with them for about twelve years, and she absolutely loved films and loved music. Um, and then I started performing in primary school, and it went through till high school. I joined a band um, and I decided to study drama. I was supposed to study psychology, which I did for a year. Um, and I went for an audition and, without telling my parents. Um, and then, <laughs> well, parents usually, they just want to make sure you're in a profession you can make a living. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, it's it's definitely emotionally rewarding um the entertainment industry you know we get to play every time we go to set uh tap into a child you know into that inner child um, and play um but there's also the roller coaster of the finances right. and well you you um south africa's got a little bit of a different system than what we have here but what they have in common is that the actors are not paid enough. You know, to you know, the majority of actors have to to struggle or to to have a second job to make it because there's not enough coming in from the actual acting. Which to me, that's a problem. You need to pay your people enough to at least a livable wage so that they can survive while they're honing their craft. I think that's the thing. It's a very um, important topic at the moment and it's been for a while now um, for example within a South African context we don't get um, residuals or right. royalty um, and it makes a big difference it makes a huge difference yeah. um, and your day rates especially within an international I almost want to say standard um, you could play this amazing big role within an in that international production and you still have to do your six other jobs and i kid you not it's sometimes six other jobs yeah that's a lot it's that's a lot, lot. So it's what a you're so if you're not acting what's your main skill what are you doing so i work as a voice artist as well oh very good I, you do I have a it. very nice voice for that you should be doing voice work. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, I do a lot of, um, of dubbing, uh, two different studios. And you know, I also, I produce music uh, for people. Really? Uh, that doesn't surprise me. I don't know why, but you seem musical to me. I just love music. Yeah. Can and you sing? I can sing. Oh, very nice. Do you play an <laughs> instrument? I play guitar and piano. Oh, that's very good. Well, you said you were you were in a band. So yeah. were, what were you the guitar player for the band or were you the piano player? I was the lead vocalist. It was sort of like a 70s rock and roll band. Oh, so we that, were, that's yeah. I, you're talking my language now. 70s to me, best, best musical decade. Most amazing, yeah. And we were we were 
quite inspired by the Doors and Janis Joplin. Um, so that was sort of like the vibe, old school rock and roll. I like that. I like that. Do you do uh, do you do theater? Um, so theater died down a little bit, especially after COVID. Yeah. And I'd say it's only picked up now for the last, probably the last year. Um, I love theater. I really, really love theater. I think there was, a, I had to make a choice where the thing with theaters is it's so rewarding because it's live and right. there's that energy between you um, as an ensemble and the people coming to watch your show. But the what I found in my experience, the work, the, the input is so much more than what you get paid, for example. So it doesn't add up. And again, I don't want to step on anybody's toes. And I think sometimes <laughs> within a South African context, they expect you to pay travel and your own accommodation if it's a, you know, a, a yeah, show. Yeah, that, that makes it kind of tough to to survive on it. Yeah. So there's a lot of people who really do it for the love of it um, because it's such a beautiful art form. Um, uh, yeah, and I think, you know, if you're an established actor in South Africa, um, you could definitely negotiate a, a really nice salary, um, also depending on who is producing the show and so on. Um, but there's definitely, you know, a place for it. Well, that's good. Yeah, because because theater, we all love going to the, to the theater. That's that's the best. And most actors, I think, will tell you they enjoy it because you're so close, so intimate with the audience. But the drawback is it's difficult to to really survive if you're doing that full time. Yeah. 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 So is there so you've played like you've done the romantic lead. You've been the villain. You know, is there a genre you haven't got to do that you would like to do? Um, most of the South African productions, there's a balance between rom-com slash drama. Yeah. I would love to do a psychological thriller. Oh, yeah. I would really, really love to do a psychological thriller. Yeah, we love those. You know, uh, something maybe... Uh, um, Alfred Hitchcocky would be good. Yes. Yeah. That would be amazing. So if you know any directors who want to... I'm making some calls. <laughs> in a psychological thriller, hit me up. <laughs> I'd like to see you in comedy a little bit. Hats off to comedians, uh, or, you know, actors who does comedy really well because it's such a... It's a very difficult genre. Yeah. It is, you gotta have I good have the, timing. I have to have good timing. Um, so I have a lot of respect for for actors and actresses who you know love comedy. Um, I find it slightly difficult. I think because I'm slightly more subdued um, as a you know in my personal capacity. Um, we well, need the I mean, right role. You know, you'd need a role where yeah. you could still be kind of subdued, almost like the uh, the straight guy that that kind of uh, is the basis for the comedy, if that makes sense. <laughs> well, comedy is a challenge and then, but I'm here for it. Bring on the challenge and for definitely psychological thriller. Yeah, yeah. I, I, we'd love to see you in that. That'd be terrific. But has it, has it changed any now that you're in one piece? You know, are you, are you, are you getting stopped more? Are you, getting, are you recognized more since that, or is it basically the same? Every now and again, um, we went out on, on Saturday evening with a couple of friends, and there were a couple of stops here and there. It's like, hey, Mr. Kuro, or wear your blades, or do the walk. <laughs> do the walk. Dance. dance. <laughs> <laughs> that could get slightly annoying if people were yelling, do the walk at you. <laughs> <laughs> Have you got to do a convention yet? Um, I would love to. I was invited to to two this year, um, but unfortunately, because of the timing, yeah. um, I didn't make it. But hopefully, uh, I've been invited, I think, to three next year, to oh, three or nice. four. So hopefully, um, I would really, really love to go and you know meet the people who love the show, 
Um, well, and be- the majority of people at the conventions are terrific. You know, they're just the best because they're just fans, you know, and they yeah. understand, you know, they're appreciative of your time. They under they don't mind waiting in line because they know everybody's going to kind of get their their moment, uh, you know, with the actors. They're terrific. I mean, you'll run into a knucklehead once in a while, but the majority <laughs> pretty great. So, yeah, I, I'm glad you're getting to do it because conventions can be a lot of fun. It definitely helps you connect with your fans. I would love to do that. No, I'm really excited about the possibilities. Any uh, any plans to to come stateside at some point? Um, I would definitely love to visit the states. I've never been to the states. Oh, really? Uh, yeah, we need to at least get you over here for a convention. <laughs> yeah. Um, so we were supposed to to go to the states this year, right before the launch. Uh, we were supposed to do a PR tour, but because of you know everything that was happening strike wise everything the whole industry just came to a to a standstill well, did and um we were supposed to to do a, a tour through america which would have been lovely so hopefully it just gets well maybe for know, season 2 they bring some of that cast back love to see your character come back but i don't know i haven't got that far in the anime yet to see if it, he ever pops back up somewhere Let's hope. Let's really hope. I'm crossing my fingers. Me too. No, I would be. I would be ecstatic. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, as fans, we always love the callbacks. You know, you think you think a character's gone forever, and then they pop back in. That we love that. No, and I would love to do that. I would love to pop in and say, "Hi, I'm still around. <laughs> I'm still around. Still wanted." It's such a neat concept because it's almost like a superhero show because everybody on it has some type of power or ability. And it's kind of neat. It, you would think, like if you're reading, okay, it's it's pirates with superpowers. It'd be like, that's that's not going to work. <laughs> <laughs> but it does. <laughs> yeah, it works beautifully. Yeah, it really does. Is So when you, when you try it out, what was it for that role or or were they just like trying to you know they liked you but they hadn't picked the role for you yet so i think my first audition was for for kiro and then the casting director invited me back for a different character as well yeah and then i got a call back for kiro um and then another round I, now that i've seen you as kiro i don't think i could see you as anybody else you know, <laughs> but I'm sure you'd have been great as one of the other characters too. But I must say, in all honesty, I really loved playing Kiro. Um, although I love all the characters, um, you know, in that's the, in that's the why film. the show's so good because every character is is kind of unique and and interesting. You know, like right. like it's very easy to get invested, not just in the you know the uh, the good guys, but in the villains too because they're so interesting. It's, yeah, it's really it's really well done how you know you're taking it from an anime normally you might have a few main characters and that's it but honestly this was more like an ense- an ensemble cuz every character is has been built out i mean they're they're having you go to therapy to develop <laughs> the character i mean most shows don't go to that detail yeah so so i went to therapy it was a it was a personal decision to make the choice like okay, cool. i want to try okay. something different I want to try something different. And um, I, I went to a therapist and I said, well, cool. This is what I have in mind. This is what I want to achieve. Uh, would you be interested in helping me through this? And she said, yes. And she was absolutely amazing. You may have so- started a whole new trend. You could, you, there may be a whole new, like a whole subculture of psychologists now that are just <laughs> there to help actors get into roles. It is really an amazing experience. Like, I think that the, you know, should I book another character, you know, either a villain um, or with trauma, I would definitely go that route again. Yeah. I'm surprised that more don't because that makes complete sense because you're trying to get in touch with what, you know, if you're playing the bad guy, you actually have to be the bad guy. So you need to understand what's motivating that character 
I, I think that's a great idea. And also, because it you as as the actor or the actress, you can't judge your character because the moment you judge um, their reasons for doing something, there's a blockage. Um, so there has to be empathy, and it has to come from a place of you know of understanding this character went through something, and they are motivated by this. So what they are doing is not wrong in their eyes. Right. Yeah, that's right. Because if you don't do that, you're going to be like, why? Well, that's I can't play that. That's terrible. <laughs> <laughs> if you, did you have like a favorite character on the show that wasn't you? I really, really loved uh, Inyaki's uh, portrayal of of Luffy. It was absolutely beautiful. It was such a a light um well he I, I, the one thing i liked about his role was that it would have been really easy to to kind of slip into silliness yeah. you know and 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 he never did that he came across as just an extremely confident positive character and i love that i thought he did such a great job uh with it but that it, it wasn't an easy character to portray no, but I, I think in Yaki, like I remember the one scene that we did um, in, it was the dinner scene when oh. he gets, when he gets on the table. Yeah. Um, I remember just in that moment, I was like, wow, this kid is really phenomenal. Like he is so kind. First of all, he's super, super kind. Yeah. Um, and he's very, very caring as well. And a very generous actor as well. So the energy that he gives you, is is absolutely amazing um well that helps right if you have somebody that's really good that you're playing off of that has to help your performance no it helps a lot um inyaki was phenomenal uh emily nami's character is one of my favorites as well like her uh, development throughout the first season as a character is just so beautiful yeah she's a she's a terrific uh actress which, which all everybody on the show was, but yeah, I really enjoyed her uh, her character, and also very very kind. Just in you know in in general as a person, she is a sweetheart. She is so 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 kind. It seemed like the cast got along really well just from the outside looking in. It seemed like you had pretty good chemistry on set. I must say, it's talking from you know the black hats uh, and including Celeste, who played uh, Kaya. Uh, we were lucky enough that we move in the in the same circles within our industry. Um, so the moment that we found out, um, we organized these like little lunches just to get to know each okay. other, talk about, you know, our characters, our characters dynamic. Um, and at the end of the show, we, we really became family. Um, Bianca and I, she, she lives down the road for me um every now and again we see each other for lunch or we help each other with a self-tape are you um, in a group text uh not in a group text i think i should start it the black yeah you cats. should start that <laughs> <laughs> now I'll let as, as just as a fan you always love when when a cast gets along because if they don't if the chemistry's off we can tell you know, because I think it bleeds over to the performance. Just everybody from, you know, Inyaki and Emily and um, Taz, uh, Jacob. Yeah. The core group, um, and I left out in Kenya, the, the core group, their chemistry as a whole was just so beautiful. And I think also um, that helped a lot um, to have that concentrated chemistry for them and it just translated into everything else um which was absolutely amazing if they wanted to spin off your character and kind of get like do a prequel give his backstory i'd be for that i'm here <laughs> for it we can call it funky bar or <laughs> i mean I that'd remember... be fun just kind of see how he became a pirate that'd be, that'd be or maybe you could see how he you know becomes a butler that might be fun to see i would love to do that um I, Stephen and i made a joke it was we were filming 
the scene where Kaya comes down the staircase. Yeah. Um, and Zoro confronts uh Clardor. And he's like, but you look familiar, don't I? I know you from from somewhere and in a funky bar. And after we finished that scene, I remember just walking up to Stephen, and Stephen is like, I could see a spin-off show, Captain Kuro on the bar in a racy outfit at Funky Bar. It's like I'm I'd watch it. that. <laughs> I'm gonna make some calls. <laughs> Please do. <laughs> Well, Alexander, thank you so much for taking a little bit of time. It's been terrific. Absolutely loved you on the show. I think you're such a talented uh, actor. I forgot to mention Power. Saw you on there uh, as well. But I hope we get to see you in more stuff uh, that, you know, that we get uh, here in the States. And I just want to thank you for, you know, for inviting me onto your show. It really meant a lot. Um, it is it's such a huge honor. This is my first interview Oh, sure. Really? That's surprising. That, but so, I would, I, I'm so happy it was us. No, and you, I'm because also, now, now you can compare all the other ones to us and just let them know that they weren't as good. <laughs> no, I really want to thank you and I hope you enjoy your coffee and your oh, yeah. workout. Yeah. Yeah. I told you I'm going to have coffee with my wife after this. I'm very, uh, very excited. She's the, uh, like, if I had to choose podcasting or her, she'd win every time. Podcasting uh -huh. be a se in second place. It might beat most of the rest, but it wouldn't beat her. So I've got a question for you right before we go. Okay. If you had to play a character in season one, who would you want to play? Oh, that's a good question. Yeah, let me, hmm. <laughs> Ooh. And it would have to be one of the characters that didn't speak a whole lot. <laughs> <laughs> I could I could probably play like uh um one of the Marines that was just kind of in the background. <laughs> or you know, you know, one of them that's that gets uh, you know the crap beat out of them at some point. That could be me. Now, if I like, if I could just choose a character, you know, yours would be a great choice because I'd want something cool. Mihawk would be a great choice. Oh, Mihawk would be fantastic. Yeah, because yeah. because I'd want you know if you're going to, especially if uh, you're only going to be in an episode or two, you want to be memorable. Yes, so I'd probably choose a villain. And there was some great ones in there. There were fantastic villains. Yeah. Yeah, I'd watch a show just about the villains. I have to say, let's do a spinoff show with the villains. I'd watch that. Like, just every episode, you could do a different one. Yeah. Be like an anthology. Mm. Man, let's I, push I, that. We got some calls to make. <laughs> so, so a couple quick things, Alexander, before I let you go. Um Anything else that you're working on that we can keep an eye out for? So I'm not at liberty to to, to say anything about the production, but I start filming uh, the 5th of January. Oh, okay. Got a little bit of prep work left, um, some stunt training and script to learn. That sounds um, like start... an action film if, uh, yes. if you're doing so stunt it's training. A, it's an action thriller, and we start filming. They actually start production now the 27th of December, which is my birthday. Oh, um, happy birthday. A little early, but yeah, there you go. So you were, uh, yeah. you were, you were around the holidays. Yes. Did, did you get gypped as a kid? Did they try to my combine those? My grandma made sure that I get two gifts, one for Christmas and one for my birthday. Okay. That's, that's good grandparenting there. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so hopefully when, you know, when we wrap up the production and we are allowed to say something, I'll definitely keep you posted. Um, but I'm looking forward to it. Um, it's an amazing cast. Um, well, yeah, you have to let us know. So I'm assuming you'll put that out on social media once you're able to. So where could we find you on social media? So on social media, it's just alexander.maniatis. Yeah, yeah, it comes right up. 
unlike yeah. if you put in Michael Wall, there's like a billion of us that come up. You have to search. Send me a deal. <laughs> well, Alexander, you've got an open invitation. Maybe when, when the new one gets ready to come out, you can come back and tell us about that one. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Hold on one second. Alexander Maniatis. Maybe. Maybe that was somewhere closer. It sounds so much better when uh, he says it. Alexander was terrific. Such a fan of his. He's got the uh, best voice. Like if he wanted to do um, voice acting for uh, for animated cartoons, anything, he, he could do it because he's got a great um, a great speaking voice. Hope you enjoyed that. If you haven't checked out One Piece yet, I'm not sure what you've been doing. You know, it's an um, absolutely terrific show. I think it was the number one show on Netflix. May still be. Uh, really, really well done adaption of the anime. Anime's uh, the most popular animated series ever. So very uh, uh, difficult to do that well live. And One Piece did such a terrific job at that. I thought um, the South African actors that were on the show were just amazing. You know, they're so talented. Alexander fits right in there. Um, I would watch him in a thriller uh, anytime or any other movie where he's the lead. I, I think he's terrific. So do your uh, do your part. Make sure you support all these terrific actors uh, in One Piece and their other work. Hope you enjoyed that. If you're finding us for the first time, thank you. We're so excited that you're here. Uh, would love to have your support. You know, we're a father and son team in a, a little town in West Virginia, St. Albans, West Virginia. You know, we had uh, no aspirations for this to go anywhere. You know, we were just doing it as a way as a father and son to kind of connect. And thanks to you, for some reason, it took off. And here we are, you know, um, Stephen uh, John Ward that played uh, Mihawk on uh, One Piece was our 700th episode. We just posted that this past Friday. I can't believe that. We hit uh, five years on the show next month. Um, it's just been incredible. IMDB, which is the entertainment database, uh, recently named us a top 100 podcast. 15 million podcasts out there to hit a top 100 list, especially with IMDB. Just incredible. We just, uh, I just, I don't even know how to, it, it doesn't seem real. You know, we're so uh, thankful uh, to have uh, any type of attention. That's just, just amazing. Um, if you'd like to support us that way, if you go to imdb.com, look up the Two Opinionated Podcast, that's all you have to do. Just bring the page up. It's free. Helps us out. You can also check out, you know, we've had almost 700 guests on the show. We do have some episodes where it's just me and Brett uh, talking nerdy stuff, but the majority of our episodes are interviews. But you can go through our uh, guest list and see who else you might like to see. Alexander was our third member of the cast uh, from One Piece that's been on the show. Stephen John Ward played Mihawk was on, and uh, Aiden Scott has also uh, been on. Although we haven't we haven't posted that episode yet, but it's it's coming. And I think Celeste uh, may come on. We're kind of working that through, and and we'll keep trying to bring uh, some of that uh, cast on. So kind of. You know, keep an eye out for those. If you prefer to watch, our YouTube channel is MeisterCon Pod. Really love if you would subscribe. That helps us so much. We'd appreciate that. Our website is MeisterCon.com. You can find all 700 episodes, audio and video, on the website. You can also kind of see what we have going on. You know, if we're going... Um, if we're going on location, if we're doing something in studio, if we're covering a convention, it'll be on the website, MeisterCon.com. Thank you guys so, so much. Till next time. Bye, everybody. Hi, everybody. I'm once again here to ask for your support. It's been a big year for the Two Opinionated Podcast. Back in February, we got to live out a dream, moderate for William Shatner here in our hometown. 
in May, we passed 100,000 downloads on our YouTube channel. And we followed that up in June with 50,000 downloads on the audio side. We recently posted our 600th episode, which is pretty good volume for just a uh, father and son operation. You know, not too many podcasts can keep that volume up. We've been doing this now for four and a half years, 600 plus episodes. We recently hit 1,000 subscribers on our YouTube channel, which is a really big deal for us because we've always gotten the views, but have struggled to get people to subscribe. So that 1,000 was a big deal for us. And best of all, we were recently named one of the top podcasts on IMDb, which is the entertainment database. You know, those that are ahead of us, we came in at number 82. Those that are ahead of us are bigger companies like Disney, mostly Marvel, and Joe Rogan, that type of uh, podcast. So for us, being just a, a small West Virginia father and son podcast, to be in the top 100 out of 15 million, it's a pretty big deal for us. So thank you for everything you've done for us so far. Got a couple little ways, though, that you can help us, and they're free, and they're really easy. If you haven't checked out our YouTube channel yet, please go to YouTube. It's under MeisterCon Pod. Just hit subscribe. It's free. doesn't cost you anything. really helps us a ton. And maybe even more important, if you could go to IMDB, IMDB.com, look up the Two Opinionated Podcast, and just look around the page. Just having that traffic on the page really helps us out. So that's a couple easy ways that you can support us, even if you're not listening or watching all of the time. And we want you to listen and watch, because I think that our... Our guest list, I would put up against anybody, any other show, podcast, anybody out there. I think our guest list holds up. So please check us out. You you probably will find somebody that you like or maybe somebody that you didn't know you liked but kind of discovered them on there. There's tons of that. If you're into music, we have that too. If you like books, we've got authors on there if you if you're more into what goes on behind the scenes in the entertainment world you know we've got producers directors um video artists anything you can think of that happens behind the scenes we've had them on the show so definitely check us out thank you guys so so much until next time hi everybody